brothers and sisters in Christ we're watching some videos kind of linked from uh, Nick Bamboo Rules uh, Red Bones I've had an issue with him <clears throat> a couple other people um, I'm watching comment and this and that this other guy uh, Yah Servant 777 um, you know, brothers and sisters, it looks like, you know, we're like kind of making a laughing stock of ourselves, you know. Um, you know, I want to speak on judgment and what is righteous judgment and what is not righteous judgment. First off, you know, like, we can probably all admit that in our culture today, not one of us has really seen a real apostle, a prophet, evangelist, teacher then pastor we got tons of pastors who aren't feeding the flock who are not telling the truth and forsaking all and being real leaders and they're leading the flocks to the slaughter you know and Jesus says in the Old Testament feed the flock of my slaughter you know and um, anyways um, because we haven't seen real men and women of God, more men who are supposed to be leading, that's biblical. If you don't like it, women, you know, I'm not saying that women don't have a place. There's women prophetesses who may be more vocal, but in a godly setting, and you can read it in the New Testament, Paul says women are to be more subservient and, you know, take it up with scripture. You know what I mean? If you have an opposing scripture, I'd love to talk with you. I, you know, I'm all about love when it comes down to it. But, you know, if you think that love is only encouragement, um, compassion, grace, mercy, um, you know, warms and, warm and fuzzies, then you're fooling yourself and you don't really know the fullness of God's love. Are you condemned? No because you know you're still alive to come to understand the fullness of God's love let's look at the Old Testament how was God's love shown to his people when they walked away from him um, I guess affliction read Psalm 119 and see how David loved the affliction of the Lord he loved God's law and the righteousness and the righteousness of God's law which was revealed to him not just the law which is good works without grace by faith you know um, he, you know, he loved the judgments of God. He had Nathan the prophet got in his face and told him, "You are that man." When he gave him the story about about uh, the wicked, uh, the, the 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 man who took the sheep and stuff, and really he was giving him a, a spiritual analogy of what he did by taking Bathsheba from her husband and having the husband done away with on the front lines of war, which he which he you know, sinisterly planned to do. And, and, and then Nathan the prophet got in his face to rebuke. Um, what I will say, and Jesus says that, you know, we cannot judge if we have a moat in our eye. If there's a moat in our eye, then we need to take it out first before we judge. But Paul says the spiritual man judges all things, yet he is judged of no man. So what I see happening a lot here on YouTube is there's a lot of people who don't really love correction. And what does the Bible say about that? The fool hates correction. So are we being fools? You know, we need to examine ourselves. And are we really in the relentless pursuit of truth at all costs? Even the cost of ourself and our emotions that don't really like uh, correction or rebuke? If you think correction or rebuke is going to come in some way that you're going to always receive it right away, um, then you're fooling yourself because that's not how God works. God will do things to you and let you go into situations. And I've even in real time recently, I've fallen into that. And the person that there's a person that knows exactly what I'm talking about if they watch this video, and I'm I'm guilty. But you know what? I walked it out in repentance. I even spoke it. I was pointing to integrity within that situation and and yet God allowed me to to stumble a little bit and trip up just to just to just to chop my pride down a little bit but that's part of the process of being someone a spiritual man you know God will have to even the prophet gets probably gets a little uh, chopped down and you know humiliated look at Jeremiah God told him to lay naked in the street you know 
How many people of you guys think that if John the Baptist showed up today, you would listen to him? You wouldn't. You know, you, you guys heart, hardening your hearts. Maybe Yah, Yah, Yah servant 777 is not operating in complete love and needs to be uh, corrected a little bit. But you know what? What's the problem? Don't shoot the messenger. Just listen to what he's saying and go to the Lord. Go, the Lord is the final counsel for you. He's the holy counselor. You don't need counselors of the world. Go and read scripture. Don't throw the message away. Don't disregard the messenger. That's the stupidest thing you could ever do. Like that's like Balaam. Listen, his last resort was the donkey. And and if he didn't hear from the donkey, he wouldn't have heard anything. Now Balaam ended up screwing up anyways, but maybe that's a bad example, but you know, look at Samson, how many warnings he kind of had and signs, you know, and he kept going the wrong way. It's like, you know, the Bible says we would never go God's way. So why have we adopted this, this belief that God only speaks in love, in this, like, in love, and we our definition of love is only half of the fullness of God's love. God, God's love is rebuke. It's affliction. It's, in, it's, it's, it's chastisement. That's in the New Testament. God says, don't despise the chastising of me. I'm pruning you. I'll let people come in and rebuke you. Because I love you. You're wicked. You are wicked to the core. If you believe that you're inherently good, or that the process that you are currently at when you watch this video, that, that you're good, you're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. You're not good. You're wicked. Go ask Jan Boshoff what he thinks. He'll tell you. And a lot of I know a lot of you guys respect him. I actually have had conversation with him on Skype. He, he, he will tell you, you are wicked. Don't ever fool yourself and tell yourself that you're good or that you've come to a place in goodness. You're wicked. Even I'm wicked. Even the prophets are wicked. They're wicked to the core. Look at Isaiah. God calls him up into heaven and he thinks, you know, he, he's a prophet at this point. He knows he's a prophet. He hears from God in these massive ways and no one else is hearing. God takes him up to heaven. He goes, woe unto me. And he, and he, puts, he says, put the coal on my lips. I'm wicked. In the presence of God, when you get closer to God, you see how much more wicked you are. But are you, are you, you know, in, in your defense, are you defending your own wickedness? Because you don't really love correction? Because you don't really love the truth? You know? You need to hear those those remarks just as much as you need to hear the encouragement. You know? There's people like block deleting and all this other stuff. It's like, come on, people. Listen to the messenger. We're part of the body. You, you, the hand cannot say to the arm, I don't need you. You know? And what do you think? It's always going to come in love? This is the indoctrination of the apostate church. It's not always going to come in some warm, fuzzy type of thing and I'm sorry to tell you but it's the truth you you're ignoring we love to read the good promises of God but you don't nobody wants to be on the foundation of circumcision which comes through rebuke chastisement affliction brokenness you know um, you name it sometimes real-time judgment if it's not the final judgment of God, then the judgment that you receive in real time is actually a blessing because you're wicked. You need, you need it. You need it. Like, people of God, wake up and, and, and see how Satan is like playing with your heartstrings. He's playing with you and telling you, oh, you know, that person shouldn't be saying anything about you. But the reality is, who cares what they're saying? Listen to the, what they're saying. Don't take the offense. Take what they're saying. Just filter it out and say, okay, what is their message here? S listen to it a few times if you have to. And then go and get on your knees. Be a man or woman of God. And pray about it. Like, what is the problem? Everybody, oh, you know, so-and-so said this about me. You know, it's, it's going to hurt sometimes. When did Jesus say, take up your cross? Does he mean it's going to be a party time? No, it means crucifixion. It means you're going to die. You are going to die to, to the old person. And when, you, when God starts bringing you up to other people, you're going to seem like totally new. I never used to rebuke people. I used to hate it. I used to run away like, oh, I, I, oh the Holy Spirit will speak. And then God smacked me up the side of the head and said, I'm going to send you and make you a messenger. And you're going to have to be humble in it. 